Hey, people are back, and we were picking up this guy. Dakan. So let's talk to him. The man before you is old. His dry yellow skin has the scars of one who has traveled everywhere and never rested long in any one place. His pinched face is inhuman inhumanely angular, and his eye ears sweep out from his skull, tapering to points. He wears a loose-fitting orange tunic, and a strange, shimmering blade is strapped across his back. The blade looks to be a two-pronged glaive, made of some metal whose surface swirls like a film of oil on a pond. And I'm sorry that I'm having trouble talking. Greetings! The man turns to you, his eyes like polished coal. He stares through you, and for a moment you wonder if he might be blind. The weapon suddenly turns dead, flat black, mirroring the man's eyes. You okay, buddy? Hail, traveler. His voice is quiet and somber, like a wind whispering through the branches of a giant tree. Hi. Your eyes have the weight of one who has traveled far to be in this place. Um, you could say that. I am known as Dakan. The emphasis he plays on the word known strikes you as God, yet familiar at the same time. You are not known to me. Do not know myself. That is for the best. In knowing yourself, there would be little in planes left worth knowing. He falls silent for a moment, still studying you with his coal black eyes. I would know why you have come to the city. I'm looking for answers. Speak your questions. I will hear you. Your features are unfamiliar. What are you? Agazerai. Agazerai? Agazerai is one of the people. One of the people? Agazerai. Yes, but what are the Gazerai exactly? The Khan is silent for a moment, then he speaks. Our history does not need to be made known to you. We would bleed to death on time's blade before I recite a fraction of the histories of our people. I don't need to know the histories, but I'd like to know if your people is there now. The Khan is silent for a moment. Know this, and accept it as an answer. We are the people who make our home upon the shifting plane of limbo. The deft motion, the Khan slips the blade from his back and holds it before him. Wait. There. We mold the matter of limbo with our minds. We forge cities with our thoughts. As you watch, a series of rippling waves of metal begin to roll forth from the center of the blade. The pitch and crest of the waves match the inflections of in Dakan's voice. In its chaos we dwell with only our knowing to preserve us. We are the Gazerai. What is the blade you had? It moved. It shifted in response to your voice. It is a Karach blade. It is an object that lets others know the rank of the wielder. Karaj. What does that mean? In your tongue, the closest translation is chaos matter. The people may it shape with their thoughts. May shape it with their thoughts. Move it with their thoughts? Karaj is not shaped by heat, but by knowing oneself. It is a mirror that reflects the will of the wielder on its surface and in its edge. When one knows themselves, the blade is strong, harder and stronger than steel. When one does not know themselves, the blade is water, formless and weak. What rank does the blade signify? The blade is a symbol carried by the Zerth. A Zerth is the one who knows the words of Zerthon. Zerthamon. In it, knowing the words of Zerthamon, they know themselves. And what's Zerthamon? Zerthamon's founded our race. He knew the Gesserai before they knew themselves. He defined the people. He gave them one mind. Okay, I have some other questions. You place special emphasis on knowing. What do you mean? All things, whether structure or flesh, their existence is defined by their knowing of themselves. And if a man does not know himself? When a mind does not know itself, it is flawed. When a mind is flawed, the man is flawed. When a man is flawed, that which he touches is flawed. It is said that what a flawed man sees, his hands make broken. Do you know yourself? Dakan falls silent. His coal black eyes take on the same distance that you noticed when you first spoke. Do you know yourself? 
The Khan speaks again. His voice has changed. His words echo like a great stone dropped into a chasm. Looks like he's forcing the words from his chest. It is not my will that you know this. Perhaps I'm being too kind in phrasing it as a question. Tell me. The words come out of Dakon slowly as if they are being carried one by one. It has come to pass that I, I do not know myself. Why? Dakon's voice drops to whisper like sand. I do not know why. I know it has happened, but I know not the how, nor the when, nor how to know myself once more. Okay, uh, other questions? Anything about the city? It is known by the name Sigil. Among the people, it is known as a city did it that does not know itself. Um, what do you mean? The city exists, but it does not know itself. In not knowing itself, its existence is flawed. How is it flawed? The city exists in opposition to itself. It has set itself apart from the plains, yet it seeks to be everywhere at once. Its walls are doors, yet it keeps those doors locked. Such an existence tells of a thing that does not know itself. In not knowing itself, it is flawed. What if the city is not flawed, and you just do not know the reasons for its contradictions? There is order in everything. Perhaps there is an underlying pattern that you cannot perceive. To your question a question. What if the city is flawed, and you see the contradiction around you? To your question a question. <laughs> you claim this city's existence is flawed. You've accepted this rather than explore the possibility that something greater may exist. That suggests that you are flawed and that you do not search for knowledge but only when a convenient for only for a convenient answer. The Khan falls silent. There is no knowing the answer to questions we have asked. If the city exists, that is all. Uh, we maintain that we know ourselves by the questions we ask and the ones we do not. If we cease asking questions and accept only what we perceive, XP's! Then we will cease to know ourselves. Dakon's voice has changed slightly, become heavier. Such words have been spoken before. I've heard them and know them. Where have you heard them? The words are mine. Once I knew them and knew their meaning, I had forgotten them until you spoke. Dakon's gaze travels through you and his blade stops shimmering, bleeding of all color until it's translucent. There's a moment of silence and Dakon looks up at you. I will travel your path with you. I accept. An extra blade your will be welcome. Your path is mine. Very well, let's go. Ding! Ah! Dakon! Endure. In enduring, grow strong. Fighter Mage gets their mail. God damn, son! Where'd you get all these XP points? Fighter level three, Mage level three. Do 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 do. Information. Biography. Okay, cool. So, yay? Um. Uh. I hear your words. Backpack, what you got? This is a broken circle of Zerthama. This is the text as a means of focusing his spellcasting abilities, for he pours over the tablet, occasionally memorizing the words. And this is a spring flask. Cool. This is Dakonzer's blade, chain blade. Oh, 
Oh god, this means I have to figure out mage spells. Um. Oh, let's map. Um. This is mage. Select item. You mage. Select spell. Okay. Submerge the will. Reign of anger. Power of one. Ooh. Huh. Okay. All right, um, yeah, <laughs> now I gotta learn how to cast mage spells. Yes, son. Maybe he'll cast for me. Who are you? Barkus. If you wish to speak to Barkus. Barkus? <sighs> what do you want this time? You again? What do you mean? Oh God! One. Yeah, you again. Got a hearing problem or something now? He's in here about 15 years ago. Got all bubbed up, smashed up the place, and left a pile of coin that wasn't enough to pay for the damages. So you plucked out your own bleeding eyeball and tells me you'd be back to reclaim it when you got 200 coins together. With 15 years of interest, you got about 500 coins. You got the jink, pal? I got your eye. Look for more. Okay, um, I got other questions. Uh, I'm looking for a journal. Journal, paper, and words? Then that sort of thing don't get much stock down here in the hive. Folks here can barely read the sign above the door, much less an entire journal. If you're looking for a journal, you better have a system instead of asking folks willy nilly. Okay, another question. Tell me about the patrons. I'll make a point to interfere with the lives of the people who give me their hard earned jink unless they ask me to. So, over there is Kandrian, plane walking. He's a good one to talk to about any plane walking question you might have. He's been pretty much everywhere. Down there is Ebb Creek Mist, an old Harmonian Basher. I don't have anything against the man I tell him. He's a good heart in here and he knows sigil up and down. Them fiends over there are Athagrin and Tegrin. Word of advice, don't do it. They might be low rankers in the fiend hierarchy, but they're still fiends. You got the other quicks over there. Not trustworthy, and some mercy killers looking for some poor sod. That kind of Gazera is a mystery to me. I don't know much about him. He don't talk much. Finally, you interested in earning some free bub? Um, yeah? There's a bub over there against the far wall, hanging about the shadows. Been trying to work up her courage to slip out without looking at the tab. I want you to make sure she don't do that. You do it, and you got free bub here for life. You know what I'm done. Okay. And that person is uh, that chicky we were talking to, the fake dust man. Her. Maki. Mokai. I was pretty damn close. Uh, what do you want? Barkus says it's time for you to settle your tab. Pay up. Uh, what are you gonna do? Pay up. I can't afford it. He spent me just ten percent. I'll uh I'll give it to him and in those I'll pay the rest. How much do you need? You need about a hundred coins to get started on the debt. Woo, do we want to be evil? We can poison her. Well, I don't really want to poison her. I kinda wanna be good. Can you think of another solution? I'm curious. Let's try that one. You could always, um, kill me. I'll just lend you the money. 
She packed her jeans, glanced briefly to the door, almost as if she's weighing her chances of dashing out. Sighs heavily, and she realizes there's no chance. She begins to walk lonely toward the bar. Um, my thanks, I suppose. I don't mention it. Don't think about running out till you've paid. All right. We're watching you. I'm gone. Done. You better, I'll send him after you again. Yay! Back again, now what? Yay, XP's! You have full bar privilege, for free. Anything you want, anytime. Must have been a pretty big tab. Wanna drink now? For information. Uh, uh, I don't know what I clicked on. Uh, Farad the Collector. Farad! You may as well just turn your back and let him stick a dagger in it. Uh, from the looks of you, you already had. If you did set on finding Farad, pardon the pun, talk to Eb Creek knees over there. He should know some of value. Eb, the old man, my thanks. And... Said you had my eye. Five hundred, that's ridiculous. That it is, tell you what. Give me three hundred and the eye shores. All right. All right, here's your money. He produces a darkened, wax stoppered, wide mouth bottle from his pocket. You hear the sound of liquid sloshing around inside, along with a heavier, squishier noise. Opening it, the stench is some sort of preservative agent <laughs> really makes you gag. Floating the viscous muck is an eye oh viscid muck is an eyeball. Better figure out what you want to do with that. Now you've exposed the day, you might as well put it your pickled egg in the jar for all the good it'll do ya. Make up your mind, pickled egg or not. Tear out your own eyeball and place this one in the socket. With a moment's hesitation you reach into your socket and pop your eye and <laughs> palm your hand. Bartender helpfully serves your optic nerve and directs your hand to the jar of goo that sits in the bar. You deposit your eye in the preservative, wrap your fingers around the old one, and slide it into your empty socket. The pain of the entire operation is incredible. After a moment, though, you can feel the optic nerve reattaching itself to the new eye, and suddenly you're hit by a flash of memory. Absorb that motherfucker! Memory flash. A vast expanse of chaotic, ever-changing wasteland stretching before you. A group of humanoid vultures plummeting towards you, cruel weapons ready to strike, your own shining blade clutched tight in your fist. Three tufts surround you in the colors of an enemy you can't quite place. Long daggers glisten in their hands, and the light glints cruelly from their exposed teeth. You glance at your scarred hands, and know that soon they'll be covered in blood. An enormous frog-like creature comes bounding over through under chaos stuff, headed for you with a mouthful of teeth. You hurl your javelin through the shifting matter and pin the creature with a sudden stone to a sudden stone plinth. You have recalled some of your lost fighting skills. Ask more questions. Proficiency points increase permanently. Hmm, what does that mean? All right, I'll see ya. Woohoo! What happened? Oh, that's right. I ripped out my own eyeball. No, me. Um, here we go. Okay, we're we're true neutral. Okay. Unused slots four. Okay. Uh, how do I do proficiency points? Do I have to wait for level up?
Where's my eyeball? Eyeball. This is your eye. It looks like it's seen better days. my wedding ring? I never noticed that. Huh. Okay, cool. Um, now what? Okay. Wow. Alright, I'm looking for, like, this phased out dude. Ebb Creek Days, there's a phased out dude. Who are you? Let's talk to the phased out dude. See, soft looking man with gentle, far staring eyes. He dresses in supple leather clothing and carries various implements of use and destruction about his body, such as ropes, bikes, tinder boxes, and empty vials of air. He looks half gone, literally. There's an insubstantiality to his existence, as if his essence had been partially leached away. He focuses those eyes on you, and suddenly you find them gripping and determined. Greetings to you, O Seeker. Sup? Carefully sets down the mug he's holding and gives you all his attention. I've seen the far reaches of the multiverse and returned to tell the tale. I've walked upon the bodies of dead gods and spun moonbeams in the astral ahead of thousand shrieking Githyanki knights. I have passed the edges of existence and watched my essence shiver away before me. What is it I can do for you? Questions? Perhaps I have answers for you. Speak, I shall tell you. Who are you? I am Kendrian Ilborn, traveler, d dreamer, tail spinner, and so forth. Traveler, tell me of the plains. I am tired, Seeker. T so tired. Fresh back from negation. I will answer what I can for you, but I cannot promise that you will find satisfaction in the answers I give. What would you know? Would you hear of the outer plains, the prime material, or the inner plains? Um, what's the difference? The difference is true essence, Seeker. The inner planes are matter, substance, true physicality. They are the building blocks of the multiverse, for it is from them that all belief in the element springs. The inner planes filter through the ethereal plane, the plane of potential, some say, which forms the elements into the worlds of mortals. Once past the, past the ethereal plane, one reaches the prime material, where it exists all matter of mortals and monsters and myths and machines. It is there that belief is born, and there that the spirits that create the outer planes are born. When mortals die, they pass through the astral plane, a no place that is thought and mental energy itself. It is all things and in none. It is paradox, among other things, and it filters spirits into the great ring. Do you comprehend so far? Yes. Now, the outer planes, where should I start? You know the cardinal rules of the planes on which all others are based? Do you know about the composition of the outer planes? Do you know of the great ring and its divisions in our hearts? Do you know of the individual planes? Each of these leads to the next, and so it is best to start from the beginning. The fuck. Welcome to Planescape Torment Existential Edition. <laughs> Tell me of the composition. Let me take a drink before I start talking again. Philosophical fine that makes me thirsty. The outer planes are created of and by belief and thought and faith. They take their imagined form from the prime material plane, shaped into forms that stagger the imagination, built by the accumulation of belief. Belief creates planes. Belief is power here. Change belief, and you change the nature of reality. The creatures that are born here, the plane born like the fiends and celestials, are truly born of the thoughts and concepts of mortals. They each express some sort of idea, and the more powerful the idea, the more powerful the being. Thus, the being that symbolizes love is one of the strongest of all. Go on. That's why the powers, gods some call them, live out here. This is where all the faith in them comes. This is where they are at their most pure and most strong. Their realms are extensions of their very beings, manifestations of their godly existence, all of it informed by belief. 
So the composition of the planes is believed. Tell me of the great rain. Among the loose unity of plane walkers, we conceive of the infinite outer planes as a ring surrounding the plane of ultimate neutrality, the outlines. The spire atop which sigils sit is in the center of the outlines. The further one travels away from the spire, the less neutral the plane grows until it spills into the neighboring planes. Each of these planes impinges on the outlines, spinning themselves into law and chaos, good and evil. The great road marks the demarcation between the outlands and the gate. Oh, and the gate towns that spring up around the gates of these plains. Beyond the gate towns lies the hinterlands, uncharted territory that has lost history, that loses thought. Danger lies in the hinterlands. Okay, go on. The outer plains differ by morality, not substance. For you, we'll divide the plains into three sets. The upper plains of good, the lower plains of evil, and the boundary plains of neutrality. These are then divided further by the line of chaos, the outlands in the middle. Which of these interest you? Um, the upper planes. Of the upper planes, there are neutral planes, the lawful planes, and the chaotic planes. What would you know? The neutral planes. Neutral upper planes contain the beast lands, a place of neutrality and goodness, with a slight tinge of chaos, where the animals rule in eternal noon and night. They hold by utopia, twin paradise of industry and labor, where all work towards good where all work toward the good of all, and Elysium, the sweetest plane of goodness and calm I have ever come across. Alas, right now I'm not well enough to enjoy under their restorative effects. What would you hear of now? Uh, I think I'm gonna stop uh, the plane thing. I had other questions. Perhaps I have answers. I'm looking for a journal I lost. I've seen no journals lately, but upon my own. And that has crumpled away into nothingness. My apologies. I had more questions. Do you know a collector named Farad? Farad grew up to be a collector? How long ago was this? When I set out last, he was but an officious stripling in one of the upper wards. Time does change some people. No seeker. I don't know Farad anymore. I'm willing to bet. Very well. Farewell. And we'll talk to this guy. Eat Creek Knees. You see a slightly stooped old man with full gray beard and a lion's mane of gray hair. He wears a couple of shoulder guards as armor, and he keeps his helmet nearby. He smokes a pipe and carries a pouch of tobacco with him around his waist. He looks pretty strong, but he's a little plump and also appears to have some sort of breathing trouble. Well now, aren't you a sight, lad? Never have I seen so many scars blank than a fella. Like a scarred cloak you're wearing. Where you been? Hanging out in the grain thresher? <laughs> oh, I'm just jesting with you, lad. No offense, man. I hope no offense taken. I'm Eb. Hey, buddy. Sandshake is firm. Now I hope to tender my apologies for unfair jesting, lad. I hope no hard feelings. Can I buy you a tankard or two of something smooth to smooth any rustle feathers? Mm, yeah, sure. That's the spirit, lad. Bite a moment. He rises to his feet and heads to the bar. After a moment, he returns to his seat with a s pair of tankards. Here you go, lad. Drink up. Takes a massive swallow of his own tankard, puffs on his pipe, and says, What can old Leb do for you in fine sigil day? Some questions. Oh, I gathered that, just by the look to, I mean, you don't look like you're from around these parts, lad. You look a little too out of sorts to be seasoned native. <laughs> so, what can I help you with, lad? You need to know the lay of the land? Uh, tell me how the city works. Don't think small, do you? If you ever want to know what's outside the city, go talk to him over there. He's the traveler of this place. As for the rest of it, well, I can tell you that the lady, the Dobbs, the Dobbs keys and portals, and the way we keep track of time, the way the city's laid out. What do you want to know? S uh, three, four, five. City's layout. Oh, let me wet my tongue. It's a good, good idea. Uh, city floats above an infinitely tall spire. The spire. It lies on its side like a discarded wagon wheel, but there's no spokes that connect it to the spire. It's divided into six wards, each of them with its own function. Right now, you're in the hive. I think the purpose of the hive is to be the squalor for the rest of the city's grandeur. Factions, philosophical clubs, or gangs, if you prefer, divide up the running of the city between them. And then... The city's called the crossroads of the plains and the city of doors and the cage. It's got portals to all the creation, they say, and all manner of beasties come through here to trade. Call kip or hop from one place to another. Now that's just the quick version, lad. You'll have to experience the rest of the place yourself. Alright. I think that's good for now. And honestly, I think that might be it. Um, for here. 
I'm gone. So, um, I'm gonna save. Oh, fuck, you scared the poopers out of me. Yep. And we will deal with more next time. See ya.